The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Today, our message is divinely delegated blessing authority. It is important to appreciate that all human authority comes from God. There isn't any authority that comes from anybody else because God is the source of all authority. And any legitimate authority, let me use that, that word legitimate, because there are people that go and look for authority from the dark world when they become witches and sorcerers and, you know, diviners, when people begin to operate in that realm, then they are not operating with the authority of God. And that is why such people are an abomination to God. But every time you think about divine authority, all of it comes from God, and it must be exercised under his rule and in his way. And so today I want us to look at basically four levels four levels of divinely delegated blessing authority. So the level number one is parental blessing authority. This means then parents are the means through which we come to the earth. There is no one here that fell from the sky or was probably hewn from a stone or some sort of inanimate being. All of us are products of our parents, whether we know them or not. There were, there, was a pa or there were parents somewhere who, by divine design, came together and you were born. So we need to appreciate that parents are the means through which we come to the earth. And we need to appreciate that, in fact, God gave the responsibility of childbearing to a man and his wife. By divine design, there are determinant factors of our welfare. Parents are determinant factors of our welfare. In other words, your welfare is intricately intertwined with your relationship with parents, whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not. There are things they will do, there are things they will say, there are things they will not do that will either positively or negatively affect you in your life and the welfare the way you are. The second divinely de delegated level of authority are spiritual leaders. Believe it or not, God has ordained that there will be people that are responsible to lead us spiritually. That is God's order. By the grace of God, I'm a spiritual leader. I lead with my wife and other leaders here, the pastors, the local church council team leaders, the departmental leaders, all these are spiritual leaders. And God delegates some delegated blessing authority upon this kind of leader. The third one is what I call authority figures. Authority figures. Everywhere in our lives, we will come into contact with authority figures. There are many Christians that frustrate their own lives and begin to blame God for their problem. And it's because they are simply not relating properly with the authority that God has ordained. So it is important for us friends to understand that the first level of um, authority figures, I think it is government, both either county or national government. There is a structure that is laid, and as Christians, as our citizens, when you line up yourself with that, there's a blessing that flows in your life. You find that you are being facilitated, facilitated as opposed to being frustrated. People who try to fight government don't end up well. They get frustrated, they lose businesses, they lose property, they are incarcerated, they are taken away from their families, and their lives never end up well. Why? Because... Authority figures are actually part of God's delegated blessing authority. The other authority figures 
are people that we, are, uh, we work under. Now, in Scripture, we don't find the correct contextual aspect, but if we look back at what used to happen and what the apostles wrote, then we can try and get the principle out of the relationships of those days. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 5 to 8. Bond servants. We are no longer bond servants, but we are employees. Most of us are employed. Okay? And if you have your own business, you probably have, you have a board of directors or governors. So at least there will always be someone that uh, gives you oversight. And so that's the one we are talking about. So bond servants or employees or subordinates, be obedient to those who are your masters or your supervisors according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in sincerity of heart, as to Christ. It's amazing how the apostles viewed the gospel those days. I'm a born servant. We end up in the same church with my master, and the apostle comes and he's telling us this way. That was a very high level of understanding of spiritual relationships. Not with eye service as men please us, but as born servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with goodwill doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that this is where the blessing is, knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. The apostles took it to the lowest, whereby you are placed and other people, in fact, even in unfair circumstances. And even then he says, when you serve, you serve as unto Christ. So when you go to your office, don't even be too worried about the earthly supervisor who is here. It's important to be. But if your standard is the Lord Jesus Christ, then the level of operation you will operate from is so high that even an earthly boss will not be able to even supervise you. There will be no need. Because your standards are very high. And this is what the apostle is saying. He's saying that when you are employed, when you have a supervisor, relate with this, this supervisor. And he says, with, you know, with fear and trembling. Modern Christians who struggle with this say, no, 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 I am qualified to work here. I, I, I render service here and uh, he is not my God. That is true. But let me tell you something. People know the secret of working with their seniors. They are blessed. Somebody would have said an amen to that. I know some of you work with bosses from hell. I know that. But let me tell you that. Even the worst boss, there is a level of performance by a subordinate they cannot resist. The problem with many of us is when we are given an office, instead of making our boss look good, we want to make ourselves look good. That's where the problem starts. When your boss tells you to write a report, Please put his name on the cover page. One day, after all, see the ones below you, that's what they do. When they write a report, do you allow them to put the report, the, the, the name, your, their name on the page? When they put, you edit. So how do you expect your boss not to do the same? Because when you are being subordinated, or you are subordinated of somebody, your biggest responsibility is to make them look good. Not yourself. You are supposed to decrease as they increase. That was the spirit of John the Baptist, isn't it? John is the one who introduced Jesus Christ. And when he came, the man said, I must do what? Decrease as he does what? Increases. In fact, it looks like John did harder work than Jesus Christ. Because he's the one who managed to gather people under very difficult circumstances and told them that there is a Messiah coming. So Jesus found a crowd already prepared for him. So what am I trying to say, friends? When God places us under other people, 
we need to know that he is going to use those people to bless our lives. And if we just understand this and begin to change the way we think so that you stop competing your seniors, you stop trying to usurp them, to undermine them, things will begin to turn around for you. When they, there, is, there are places they sit, you don't sit. There are things they would talk about you that you don't know because of how you have handled yourself. That's how God has ordained it. And if you want to know that I'm speaking the truth, do the opposite. You will come to my office for prayer. And the first question I will ask you is, what did you do to your boss? Because I know something wrong will have happened. So what is the first level of delegated blessing authority? Yeah? Number two? Number three? Now, number four is tricky, but I think it is also true. Number four is husbands and wives or spouse. Now, for those of you that are not yet married, just listen. This may be good for you in advance. John, <laughs> I know you're still young, but keep this at the back of your mind because you will need it someday. Now, I believe when God brings a man and his wife in holy matrimony, it is a way of providing avenues of blessings for one another. In fact, even before I go to far, I even quote this verse. The Bible says, he who finds a wife, finds what? Eh? A good thing and does what? Obtains favor. What is favor? Favor is divine assistance. Divine assistance. So meaning that when a man finds a wife, he finds divine assistance. I don't know whether that's not a blessing. In fact, the lady does not even need to say anything. The fact that you have been found, you yourself are just a blessing even before you do or say anything. Ladies would have you related on that one. Hey, what else do you want me to say to make you happy? <laughs> Let's begin with the husband's. Ephesians 5, 25 to 28. I believe husband and wife should be mutual blessings to one another. Give me the message version, and I want us to read together. And I want men to be louder. <laughs> I want men to be loud. Actually, I want men to read this. Men and young men, all of you. Ladies, you keep quiet. You are going to read us your, your portion, okay? Okay, men, shall we read together? I want to read. Hmm? Let's repeat that. <laughs> Say, Bishop, which, which version is this one? <laughs> you know, you are reading like you are scared. Eh? <laughs> Shall we read together? Want to read? Husbands, go all out in your love for your wives. Exactly. Uh -huh. A love marked by giving. Not getting. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. Makes the church whole. His words evoke her beauty. Everything he does and says is designed to bring the best out of her. Dressing her in dazzling white silk. Radiant with holiness. And that is how husbands ought to love their wives. They are uh -huh. in uh -huh. yeah, it had better end because it's been... <laughs> so so you already can see actually when a woman gets a wife that understands. I mean, when a woman gets a husband that understands how he needs to love her, it's a blessing. You see, I want you to see that God, God could have loved, and God does love a woman, 
But there is a love that God decided he wouldn't love the woman with. The love of a husband and put it in a man. Such that the only way the woman can get this love is to get that man. I don't you understand that. So God simply delegated that aspect of loving. God loves you so much. He actually brought Jesus. He died on the cross for you. He does many things. He heals your sicknesses and diseases. And that's wonderful, isn't it? But there is this thing called the love of a man that God won't give you, but he allows a man. He puts that love in a man and sends a man to you. So God loved that lady for me. That's what I want you to see. Because you are still wondering, where is this blessing, Bishop? <laughs> That's why there are things that if your husband doesn't do, God will not do them. Okay, I think I need to stop there and then we wait for the, we wait for the couple seminar. We wait for the couple seminar. <laughs> there are things that if your husband doesn't do, even if you pray, and you go to a conference, God will not do them. Reason, he delegated that kind of blessing, authority to someone else. And that is your husband. Husbands, go all out in your love for your wives, exactly as Christ did for the church. A love marked by giving, not getting. Christ's love makes the church whole. His words speaking, the things that Christ speaks, evoke her beauty. Everything he does and says is designed to bring the best out of her. Wow. Dressing her in dazzling white silk, radiant with holiness. And that is how husbands ought to love their wives. They are really doing themselves a favor since they are already one and married. So I want you to see that God has decided that when it comes to affection from a man, the highest level of affection that a woman would get from a fellow human being is from a husband, and that has been delegated by God. It is God who designed marriage, and he allowed men to be able to fall in love, or a man to be able to fall in love with a woman, and then express that love. And until that man does that, that love is not available for that woman. That's how serious this is. First Peter chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. I now want the ladies to read this one. Ladies, want to read. Wives, likewise, if you want to know what likewise is, you just go to the previous uh, scripture talking about husbands, and then we have already handled that, especially from Ephesians. Likewise, be submissive to your own husbands. That's very important, own. There are men who think every woman should submit to them. It's not correct. Own. So if you are a lady and you are in an office somewhere, do not let any man misquote scripture to you. You are only supposed to submit to your own husband. That even if some do not obey the word, they without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives. This is one of the highest levels of blessing. That a wife, by just submitting and loving the husband, in fact, the man can be converted to Christ. That's the highest level of blessing. Even without preaching. There are ladies who want to spend a lot of time quoting verses to their husbands. This is the formula. 
Well, you know, Bishop, pray for my husband. He has refused to come to church. You are throwing him farther away. Don't do that. Just submit to him and love him. He will start bringing you to church. And the next time he will come and wait for you so that the service ends quickly. You're mending him back. Wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the word, they without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives when they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear. So we have seen a husband is a channel of blessing to the wife, and the wife is a channel of blessing to the husband. In other words, God has delegated to both of them the capacity to be a blessing to one another. That's why God allowed us to come together. Otherwise, remember we said last week that every good and perfect gift comes from above. A wife is supposed to be a blessing to the husband. A husband is supposed to be a blessing to the wife. Not just buying gifts and things, but just the way we handle one another. Just the way we treat one another. And that's what 1 Corinthians 7.3 actually now totaled this up. 1 Corinthians 7.3, the Bible says, Let the husband render to his wife the affection due to her, and likewise also the wife to her husband. The bottom line here is affection. Spousal affection is simply delegated to the spouse. Children cannot provide what the, the, the husband, uncles cannot provide, parents in law cannot provide. God himself has decided he will not give that kind of love to us. That's why the love of God is God agape, not eros. God said, this one I remove from myself, I give it to someone else who will give it to you. So you begin to see when we play around with these things, we are not only just frustrating the plan of God, but we are denying each other. That which God ordained that you come to us. You are denying somebody a blessing that is due to them. I hope this makes sense to you and in your life. And because it's not a couple seminar, let me stop there. So very quickly, levels. Give me the slide again. I want to just quickly run through that and conclude the sermon for today. So we have seen there are four levels of delegated blessing authority. Level number one is parental. God has delegated Authority to parents to bless. God has delegated authority to spiritual leaders to be a channel of blessings when we relate with them properly. God has also delegated a blessing authority to authority figures, people that are placed over us in different structures where we operate from. And finally, in this union of marriage, God has allowed a husband to be a blessing to the wife and also the wife to be a blessing to the husband. In conclusion, three things. One, you need to clearly understand your function because in all those areas, we are all likely to be there at one or the other. In fact, most of us here are able to actually uh, fit in there. We are, uh, we are what? We are, some of us, most of us are parents. Some of us are spiritual leaders. Many of us here are authority figures where we are. And also quite a number of us here are spouses. So you need to understand your function. Anytime delegation occurs, one of the principles of delegation is when you delegate, you need to clearly help people understand their function. Because if somebody doesn't understand their function, they will not do what they were told to do. And one of the reasons why we fail in our delegated responsibility to bless is because we are oblivious. You're a parent, you don't understand your function. Coming week, God giving us opportunity. I'll be talking about how to bless your children. Because I realize we probably think it's automatic. We need to, how do you bless your children? How do you become a blessing to them? There are many ways you can speak, you can model, but there are a number of ways. And so we will look at them. How do we do that? So one of the reasons why we are not being a blessing to one another, to our children, even to our spouses, to the people that work with us or we work for, is because we do not understand our function as far as this aspect of delegated blessing is concerned. When you understand that, you will begin to function properly. If you are a husband, you understand your function the way the Bible puts it. 
you will not have a problem being a blessing to your wife. And vice versa, if you're a wife and you clearly understand your function in your husband's life, you will be a blessing to him most of the time. Because again, we are not in perfection. Sometimes we fail, uh, but we should be able to see that we are succeeding most of the time. Number two, you need to exercise authority so that you can carry out your responsibility. When you are delegated, when delegation is done, authority must accompany responsibility. The reason why God has delegated the authority for you to bless is because there is responsibility. So that means if you step into your office and do what you need to do, heaven will move on your behalf. When you bless your children, heaven will move. When you bless the people that work with you and for you, heaven will move. When you bless your spouse, heaven will move. And certain things will be happening around your life and you begin to see the blessings of God around your life. And then finally, you must take responsibility as far as God is concerned for your results. If you believe that you have delegated responsibility from God to bless, then it means you are responsible for the results. God has delegated certain things to you. God wants you to bless your children. God wants to bless the people that work with you and for you. God wants you to bless your spouse. God wants you, you know, to, to, to live well with the leaders that God has placed over you. But ultimately, at the end of the day, God still takes responsibility for the things that happen and don't happen. That's why when we fail to play our role, for example, as parents, our children may struggle, but somehow they will still manage in life. There are some of us here that have not been blessed by our parents, but we are still around. We may have struggled. Maybe if they did, it would be better or would be farther. They would have given us a better beginning. But because God had expected them to do that, and we didn't do it, then he will still come and take over and see how that happens. Life will never be the same again. If you are married, your husband doesn't bless you as much as he should, you know, you won't die. You, God will still bless you in other ways, but there will be certain aspects of your life that will never be the way they were meant to be. If your husband and your wife hasn't treated you the way she should, you may not die, you may not even lose weight, but God will, God will come through for you. But there will be certain provisions and aspects of your life that will not be the way God wanted them to be. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I'm not saying that just because somebody has not done their part, then everything is, is broken. God is fair and is faithful. He still takes responsibility and makes sure that whatever we miss, somehow he will help us to go through and compensate for that in his own way. Amen? Preachers are forced to devise ways and means of making sure that the basket does not pass you by. In many churches, you are forced to put your envelope, I mean your offering, in an envelope. One, to eliminate coins, because coins don't sit very well in an envelope. Others, remove an offering and wave it. Who wants to see the offering really wave? It's the preacher, not God. God can see you in your pocket. If you remember some song we used to sing, are corrupted, we corrupted it. Joe and do good. Joe and do good. Uli chona joe. So it is, not the, it is not God who wants to see you waving your offering. It is a preacher because he has known that and unless you are ashamed that way, you remove the weakest offering that you only can see. So he says, remove it. Don't be ashamed of your, of your offering. So he forces you to remove the best. Then you go home and saying, I'm not... I'm not coming to this church again. Why? Because I am forced to give what I have not planned to give. Let's not get there. Let's allow the grace of giving to flood our hearts. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you. The order of our services is as follows. From 9 a.m. to 9.30 a.m., we have the intercessory prayers. And from 9.30 a.m., we have the main service, which runs concurrently with the teens and children's church. You are all welcome.